Hello everybody. I am Mrs. Isha Likhite from Deccan Education Society School. Today we will begin with the second lesson of history. In the last lesson we studied about historiography of table scholars. Today we will begin with historiography Indian tradition. Now let's move towards PPT. We all know that history is divided and studied into three periods that is ancient period, medieval period and modern period. So we will study historiography in the three different periods that is historiography in the ancient period, historiography in the medieval period and historiography in the modern period. Let us begin with the historiography in the ancient period. In the ancient period there was no written source. So all the things, events, memories of the ancestors, their work, mythological lore were preserved with oral recitals. Mythological lore means the tradition or the knowledge passed from one generation to another usually orally. Mythology means old stories and beliefs. Like mythological lore, we have folklore also. Folklore are the traditional stories and culture of a group of people. Also the social transitions were preserved with the help of oral recitals. Social transition means the change that took place in the society. All these events were preserved with the help of oral recitals which means orally. The inscriptions on the Harappan seals or the artifacts that are found during excavation at the Harappan sites reveal that Indians knew the art of writing at that time. But Harappan script is not yet deciphered, which means we cannot understand that script even today. The script is full of signs and symbols. All the earlier documents of history found in India are in the form of inscriptions. Inscriptions mean something which is carved out and written, which may be on the rock, caves or copper plates and coins. For example, the earliest known written documents of history found in India are from Emperor Ashoka Maurya's times. King Ashoka was the third ruler of the Mauryan dynasty. His edicts are inscribed on natural rocks, stone pillars, etc. From the first century CE, inscriptions begin to occur on coins, metal images and sculptures and also on copper plates. They give us important historical information. We come to know about the dates of various kings, different dynasties, their territories and their extent, administration of various empires, kingdoms, important political events, social organizations, climate of that particular area, floods, famines that occurred etc. of the respective times. The ancient Indian literature includes the epics of Ramayana, Mahabharat, Puranas, Jain and Buddhist texts, historical accounts by Indian authors, travelogues by foreign travelers, writing of biographies of kings and dynastic histories are an important steps in the Indian historiography. For example, Harshacharit, written in the 7th century CE by Barnabatta, is King Harsha's biography. King Harsha, also known as Harshavardhan, ruled North India. He was a member of Vardhan dynasty. Banbhatta was a Sanskrit prose writer and poet in the 7th century in the Harshavardhana's court. This biography portrays a realistic picture of the social, economic, political, religious and cultural life during the king's time. Now, let us move towards historiography in the medieval period. Talhana, a Kashmiri author, wrote the history of Kashmir in a book called Raj Tarangini. Raj Tarangini is a legendary and historical chronicle of the northwestern India, particularly the kings of Kashmir. It was written in Sanskrit by Kashmiri historian Kalhana in the 12th century. It consists of 7,826 verses which are divided into 
eight books called Tarangas. Talhana has written this text after critically examining various sources like coins, inscriptions, remains of ancient monuments, dynastic records, and local tradition. In the medieval India, the historians in the courts of Muslim rulers were influenced by Arabic and Persian historiography. Ziauddin Barni wrote Tariq e Firush Shahi. In this book, he has stated the purpose of historiography. According to him, historians should not only write about the king's valor and policies of welfare, but also write about his failings and incorrect policies. He thus expanded the scope of historiography. Historians in the Mughal courts praise the emperors. Adding of poetic quotes and beautiful pictures was also introduced. Babur, the founder of Mughal Empire, wrote an autobiography called tuzuk e babari The autobiography contains the descriptions of the battles fought by him, his observations of various regions travelled by him, including the culture, customs and geographical surrounding of that particular region. Abul Fazil and another historian wrote Akbar Nama. His method of writing includes authentic historical documents and they are free from the biased situations and hence seem realistic. Another important type of historical document of medieval times is Bakhar. Bakhar is a form of historical narrative written in Marathi prose. More than 200 Bakhars were written in the 17th to 19th centuries. The most important of them chronicling the deeds of the Maratha ruler Shivaji. Bakhars are considered the valuable resources depicting the Maratha view of history, but also criticized for falsification of facts. Bakhar contains eulogies, that is, a speech written to praise someone. Stories of historic events, battles, lives of great men, etc. Example of Bakhars like Sabhasad Bakhar, written by Krishnaji Anand Sabhasad, which gives information about the rule of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. Bhau Sahibanchi Bakhar, Panipatchi Bakhar, describes the battle of Panipat. Holkaranchi Kaifiyat states about the contribution of Holkars to the Maratha rule. Bakhars are of different types. For example, state administration by a king, autobiographies, description of certain events, biographies of kings, etc. Now, let us move on to the historiography in the modern period. During the British rule in India, the Indian archaeological exploration and research started under the British rule, Sir Alexander Cunningham, who was the first Director General of the Archaeological Survey of India. Many ancient sites were excavated under his supervision, mainly the sites mentioned in the Buddhist text. During the tenure of Sir John Marshall, Harappan civilization was discovered. Because of this discovery, the ancient Indian history could be traced to 3rd millennium BCE or even earlier. Many British officials also wrote about Indian history. We can see the influence of colonial policies in their writings. Three volumes of The History of British India written by James Mill, were published in 1817. This was the first book on Indian history written by British historian. The History of India, written by Mount Stuart Elphinstone, governor of Mumbai, was published in 1841. These books were written according to the British views and shows absence of good aspects of Indian culture. Grant Duff is another British officer who wrote about Maratha history. He wrote the book A History of Marathas. His writings also shows the British inclination of condemning Indian culture and history. Similar views are also seen in Colonel Todd's writings about Rajasthan's history. The two volumes written by Wilson Hunter on Indian history 
also show impartial treatment given to the Indians. So all these books were written from Britishers' point of view. They underestimated Indians and did not glorify the Indian culture. Taking into consideration all these writings, Nilkant Janardan Kirtane and Vishwanath Kashinath Rajwade, the two Indian historians took upon the task of exposing the limitations of Grand Duff's writings. Our next unit is Indian historiography, various ideological frameworks. In this, the first one is colonial historiography. A colony is a territory under the control of a state apart from their home territory. Some colonies were countries too. In America, there were 13 colonies. The term colonial historiography applies to the historians of the countries colonized during their period of colonial rule and to the ideas and approaches associated with historians who were characterized by colonial ideology. The early scholars who studied and wrote Indian history were mainly British officers and Christian missionaries. Their writings clearly reflect that they have ridiculed Indian culture. Their writings were only to justify the colonial British rule. For example, the five volumes of Cambridge History of India published during 1922-1937 CE. Our next unit is Orientalist Historiography. An Orientalist is someone from the West who studies the language, culture, history or customs of countries in Eastern Asia. They study the similarity between Sanskrit and some of the European languages. They focus more on the Vedic tradition and Sanskrit literature. Their studies resulted into formulating the notion of an ancient language that will be the mother of all Indo-European languages. In 1784, Sir William Jones founded Asiatic Society in Kolkata, which opened the doors for research in ancient Indian literature and history. Frederick Max Muller, an Orientalist scholar, deserves a special mention. According to him, Sanskrit was the most ancient language of the Indo-European languages. He was very much interested in Sanskrit literature. He first translated the Sanskrit text of Hitopadesh. Hitopadesh means beneficial advice. It is an Indian text in Sanskrit language consisting of fables with both animal and human characters. It includes worldly wisdom and advice on political affairs in simple language. Frederick Max Muller was the editor of 50 volumes of the Sacred Books of the East. He also compiled Rigveda, which has been published in six volumes. He translated Rigveda in German language. As we know, there are five Vedas. Yajurveda deals with the knowledge about mantras and how to chant it. In Rigvedas, various hymns for praying God of nature are mentioned. In Samveda, verses from Rigveda is given music. In Atharva Veda, philosophical questions, that is, origin of universe, are mentioned and information about medicines and medicinal herbs is also there. Edward said, a scholar who was re-evaluated the Orientalist writings, has thrown light on imperialistic interest of Orientalistic scholars. Next is nationalistic historiography. The writings of Indian historians who were trained in the British educational system show an inclination to restore the pride in the ancient glory of India and the self-esteem of the Indian readers. Their writings are known as nationalistic historiography. Nationalistic writings in Maharashtra were inspired by Vishnu Shastri Chiprunkar V.K. Rajwade, etc. V.S. Chiplunkar 
criticized the prejudiced history of ancient India written by British officers. Nationalistic historians tried to seek the golden era of Indian history. P.K. Rajwade is well known for his writings in Marathi on various subjects like history, linguistics, etymology. Etymology means study of the origin of words and the way in which their meanings have changed. He compiled, edited 22 volumes of Marathancha Itihasachi Sadhane and wrote pref prefaces to each of the 22 volumes. Preface is introduction to a book stating its subjects and aims. He was of the view that history is the all-inclusive image of the past societies. It does not include stories of political images or wars. He insisted that history should be written only using the authentic documentary source. The nationalistic historiography helped in functioning the independence movement against Britishers. In this aspect, the Indian War of Independence, 1857, written by Vinayak Damodar Savarkar, is of great importance. This gave momentum to the writing regional histories too. For example, South Indian regions. Now we come to the next unit, historiography in the post-independence era. Along with writing the dynastic histories, the cultural, social, economic histories were also written. Scholars of the post-independence era began to feel the need of writing histories. Various communities, sciences, economic systems, etc. The historiography of this era has been influenced mainly by three ideological schools. These three ideological schools are Marxist history, subaltern history, and feminist history. So today, we will learn all these three ideological schools. The first is Marxist history. Marxism theory was given by Karl Marx. He was a German philosopher of economics. His theory states that the society's classes are the cause of struggle and that society should have no classes. Here classes refers to the four Varnas which were followed in Vedic period, namely Brahmins, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas and Shudras. It is a political and economic way of organizing society where the workers own the means of production. There should be no classes. The government should control all resources and means of production and not the people. Here, ideological school refers to ideology in education, refers to the beliefs, customs, culture and values that give direction to education in areas like curriculum such as economics, politics, moral and religious knowledge of truth. The concern for the means of production, modes of production and the industrial relations were at the center in the writings of Marxist historians. The basic theme of Marxist historiography is to analyze the impact of every social event of significance. Marxist historians in India studied the transitions within the caste system. Comrade Sripad Amruddhangi was one of the founder members of the Indian Communist Party. During the British rule, Dange was arrested by the British authorities for communist and trade union activities and was failed for an overall period of 13 years. Primitive Communism to Slavery, the book written by him, represents Marxist historiography. The next ideological school is subaltern history. Subaltern means the bottommost ranks. Italian historian and the Italian Marxist philosopher Antonio Gramsci developed the idea that history should be written starting from the bottommost ranks of people in the society. Folklore has been considered as a very important source of writing subaltern history. 
Ranjit Guha, an Indian historian, played a major role in establishing subaltern history as an important academic school of historiography. Similar thoughts were expressed by Mahatma Jyotira Phule and Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar. Mahatma Phule drew attention to the exploitation of women, Shudras, and Atishudras done under the name of religion in his book Gulamgiri. The term Shudra and Atishudra indicates bottommost ranks in the caste system. The role of Dalit caste people were not acknowledged in the colonial and nationalistic historiography. Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar focused on this fact consistently and wrote two books, Who Were the Shudras and the Untouchables. The next ideological school is feminist history. The role and achievements of women in history remain neglected as mainly male scholars were involved in the writing of Indian history. This was the major task faced by the feminist historians. It was important to study and compile the historical writings of women. It was also necessary to rethink about women's position in history. The belief that women should have the same rights and opportunities as men is called feminism. The one who supports this belief is called feminist. Among women authors writing about women in the 19th century, Tarabai Shinde was the foremost one. She wrote about the male-dominated social system, caste system in her book, Sri Purush Tulna, published in 1882. In 1888, the book written by Pandita Ramabai was published entitled The High Caste Hindu Woman. Meera Kosambi, an Indian sociologist, wrote a book called Crossing the Thresholds, Feminist Essays in Social History. Dr. Sharmila Rege's work is also noteworthy. Her book, Writing Caste, Writing Gender, Reading Dalit Women's Testimonies includes her essays on the autobiographies of Dalit women. Thus, we can see that the feminist literature of the post-independence era concentrated on the issues like employment of women treatment given to them at their workplaces, their right to political equality, etc. Apart from these, there have been a number of Indian historians who wrote without writing for a particular ideology. Among them were historians like Sir Jadunath Sarkar, Surendranath Sen, Riya Satkar G. S. Sardesai, and Trambyak Shankar Shezwalkar. Historians like Yashwan Dinkar Fadke, Ram Chandra Guha have contributed extensively to the historiography of modern India in the recent times. Thus, we can conclude that Indian historiography has been influenced greatly by the social and political movements. But before we come to the end, we will discuss the boxes which are there in the lesson. Boxes are very important in the lesson and they provide extra information to us. The first box is about the Sohagura copper plate. The copper plate was found at Sohagura in district Gorakhpur, Uttar Pradesh. It is from the Mauryan period. We can see inscription on it. It is in Brahmi script. We can see two symbols, tree in railing and mountain at the beginning of the inscription. Another symbol looks like a structure erected on four pillars, indicates granary, that is the place where grains are stored. The inscription records a royal order that the grains stored in the granary should be distributed carefully. It is a precaution taken in the times of famine. The next box is about the literature written during the Sultanate period and accounts of foreign travelers. The period between 1206 AD and 1526 AD in India's history is known as the Delhi Sultanate period. During this period of over 300 years, five dynasties rule in Delhi. The box gives us information about Al-Biruni who wrote in Arabic about Indian knowledge and social life. Accounts of foreign travelers in India are also important. Ibn Battuta, Abdul Razak, Marco Polo, Barbosa were among them. Their accounts provide us with historic information of medieval India. Another box is about Justice Mahadev Govind Ranade. He was a social reformer, Indian scholar, and founding member of Indian National Congress. The next box is about B.K. Rajwadi, that is Vishwanath Kashinath Rajwadi, also known as Itihascharya Rajwadi. He was an historian, scholar, and was a researcher in Maratha history. V.K. Rajwadi founded Bharat Itihas Sanshodak Mandal in Pune on 7 July 1910 to facilitate the historical research. The next box states some views about Govind Sakaram Sardesai. 
the publication of Marathi Riyasat by Govind Sakharam Sardesai was a momentous achievement in the field of Indian historiography. His work became so famous that people began to address him as Riyasatkar. He published several volumes of Maratha history. So here we come to the conclusion of our second lesson. We have seen historiography in the ancient period, medieval period and modern period. We have also discussed various ideological frameworks like subaltern history, Marxism history, etc. Also, we have seen extra information in the boxes which are there in the lesson. Thank you.